welcome to the Tumbleweed Podcast, where we discuss an eclectic range of topics, including business, design, Texas culture, and everything in between. We're two teachers that turned a side hustle into a nationally known apparel brand, and now we work with some of the biggest names in Texas. We strive to never stop exploring and continue to draw inspiration from our adventures. So drift and explore or raise a glass. We're always ready to hang out and talk about the things that we love. So come roll with us as we drift and explore. Hey, hey, y'all. Welcome to the Tumbleweed Podcast. I am Brian Wysong, co-founder and owner of Tumbleweed Textiles. And today I'm super excited to have a guest with us to talk about a subject that we have not discussed yet in our Tumbleweed Podcast episodes. And that's a little bit of law and golf and Frisco. And let me introduce you to David Ovard. Let us know who are you and what exactly do you do? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, My name is David Ovard. By day, I'm an attorney by trade, and I help people put their business deals together and negotiate deals and um, make sure that they're handling their businesses correctly. Um, Around Frisco, I'm probably most well-known as Ren Ovard's husband, (laughs) Dawson and Davis's dad. Um, And also, uh, I think word's gotten out that I uh, put the PJ Frisco project together and it's uh, doing pretty well. Man. So around here, that's that's kind of what I'm known for. I don't have to. Good goodness gracious, you know, it's, those are some big things. Uh, Ren is, uh, is she needs to be a guest with us eventually one day. I would think. But would um, think. but hopping into it, uh, you mentioned golf. Uh, let's backtrack to Frisco, Texas, because when I talk to people about Frisco, very few have actually lived here for a long time. Mm-hmm. Most have moved here in the last one to maybe four or five years. Right. I kind of want to think you're an OG to the city of Frisco. What brought you to the city of Frisco, and why have you decided to you know, put your roots here in the city? Mm, that's an interesting question. So I was uh, born and raised in Dallas, went to Lake Highlands High School, then went to University of Texas undergrad, SMU Law School. And um, working for Strasburger and Price, we were recruited by Mayor Mike Simpson when he was the mayor and the wow. city council. We were recruited to open up. The, we were the first sophisticated law practice. Okay. Um, and in order to grow Frisco, make sure that there was a sophisticated law practice to help people with their businesses, they were recruiting folks for finance, health care, tech, all those things. Right. Right. And so you want to make sure that you have the professionals to do that. So they recruited us to open up an office here. We did that in 2004 and moved. I moved my office and my home within the same month in 2004. And we've been here ever since. Any regrets? None. Um, The burbs? None. I have absolutely loved Frisco. Okay. Um, It's we've been able to volunteer and help in all sorts of capacities, um, both the city, the Frisco YMCA. Ren's got a list of like probably 20 different things that she's volunteered for, and that may right. be short selling it. Oh, I'm um, sure. And, and I've tried to assist and be involved as well, but we've, it, it's a world-class city with a hometown feel. Right. And we love it. We've always loved it. We still love it and we're not going anywhere. So specifically law. Okay. I'm a Red Raider. So when you say UT, I'm like, oh goodness. But some of the best lawyers probably come out of UT, right? Um, what, I guess, what, and I know about your father, mm-hmm. a judge, kind of share that story of like maybe what inspired you to pursue law and do what you do right now with uh, professionally. So my, my dad was a judge, became a judge when I was in grade school. Uh, then later, my granddad became a state rep. And so we sort of ran in those circles. My mother was a vice president of bank, at a bank, a big bank, and she wrote loan and credit policies back when women didn't necessarily have a lot of those jobs. Right. And so it was, a, it, was a, it was a great upbringing. I got to learn a lot. Um, and, but my dad was one of those people where he always tried to reach – you do what you have to do. You call the shots under the law as they are. But in situations where there could be a reasonable resolution reached outside of litigation and all that kind of stuff, he would reach across the aisle and try to put those things together. Right. right. And that's a, there's a true skill set to that. And so even the folks across the aisle, when he retired, um, they named a courtroom after him. And I always tried to learn from that. Right. And right. so if you have to fight the fight, you fight the fight. But if there is a way to reach a reasonable resolution, oftentimes that's the best way to go. That's so, cool. so at least take a look at it. Right. And figure it out. So with that, so we, we, you grew up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Mm-hmm. 
We know how you got to Frisco. We heard a little bit about your law background. What about golf? Uh, and not necessarily the PGA, right? but your involvement with golf. Maybe tell a little bit about your two sons and their successes they've had. And uh, just what's your involvement with golf? So I only played sporadically growing right. up. I didn't know that people played year-round in tournament golf and all that kind of stuff. But my sister and I used to give each other, our, our respective children, we would give gag gifts, right? So I gave my niece one time this really loud, annoying driving game <laughs> that just drove my sister's family insane. So when my oldest Dawson had a birthday, my sister gave him, didn't tell me she was doing it. She gave him real golf clubs with real golf balls and said, hey, go in the backyard and hit these. So I come home and he's hitting balls against the fence, against the wall, you know, and, and she said, hey, I win, right? There you so go. his buddy across the street, they ended up going to a golf camp for a week. And I went to pick him up and they said, hey, your son's really good. And I thought, yeah, they're trying to sell me lessons and, you know, we got to go. We got things uh-huh. to do. And turned out that he was actually really good. And then the younger one started playing the moment he could stand up because of his older brother. Right. So Dawson, the old one, played. they both played – World-class golf, but junior world championships. Dawson played at SMU, just went pro two weeks ago. That's incredible. And Davis is going to play at Baylor starting in August in six weeks. So we, we've been – we have done the sick whole em. junior yeah, – sick em bears. <laughs> um, never thought I'd say that. I know. Uh, but we're, we're, we're all in. Um, we – there's a circuit that you travel, just like the PGA Tour. There's a circuit for the junior golf world for the high-level kids if you want to, you know, do it. And so we've spent, gosh, more than 10 years traveling the country doing those tournaments yeah. and playing and all that stuff. So so collegiate uh, golf for all sports. I mean, we've been able to talk about this a little bit, and I, mm-hmm. I, it just came to mind. I didn't plan to ask about this question, but what do you think about the whole NIL? Like, what is that, and what's your thoughts about that with uh, collegiate athletes? So when it – I actually – was a collegiate athlete for a bit. And I saw the guys on the football team where they couldn't have jobs on the side. They couldn't earn money on the side. And some of those guys were putting their their clothes in with their uniforms to get washed because they didn't have money to wash wow. their clothes or weekend. They didn't have money to go on a date to go to yeah. the movies or what have you. And the money that the NCAA and the schools were making on those kids, I thought that's felt unfair to me. I thought that the NCAA could have worked it out but they took too long to do it, and it was forced on them via litigation is what is what happened. And so for the revenue-generating sports, for football, basketball, I think it creates some more fairness than what was there. It just – it's becoming a thing. Like the money's getting really big in some situations, and right. there needs to be some way to sort of keep an eye on that. Definitely. But, you know, those 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 folks are creating a lot of revenue – for, for the system, for the NCAA and for the universities and everything else. for the, So for them to make some money on it, I, I, I think it's okay. Right. Just I don't want to see those people get out of college and that money gets spent, right? It, maybe some of it should go into a trust. Maybe some of it should go into uh, – be forced into money management where it's it's protected and spent wisely and it helps create a future for them. No doubt. Right. I think, I think it could be – that those funds could be protected better, but – We'll have to see how that plays out. It's amazing seeing the. I mean, there was a student uh, went to Liberty High School mm-hmm. where I used to uh, teach, and Jeb and our team. You know, that's kind of our high school that we rep here, right? Uh, and it's amazing seeing this this knucklehead guy that <laughs> goes that you know isn't doesn't follow the rules necessarily the right way, and then they get this huge deal, and then he, he's living a whole different lifestyle and. Mm-hmm driving a new car, dressing better than I will ever dress in my life. And, you know, he's just a freshman in college, you know, and it's amazing to me how how they're able to do so well such an early – before they've even proven themselves in college. Yeah, it's it, some of that's pretty crazy, right? And so you see folks moving around from college to college. Right. Um, I think over time some of that will sort itself out. But I really want – I really would like to see a way for those funds to be protected to help those folks that – you know, college really is, you know, their their athletic career probably will end at that point or certainly not be very long in the pro ranks. Yeah. Take that money and have it protected and so it doesn't um, get spent unwisely. For sure. Right. And so, hey, the, those those folks are – I'll tell you a funny story. When Dawson was being recruited, one of the schools that recruited him was Auburn. And we went to the Auburn – I think it was the Auburn-Georgia game. And, I mean, it's a show. It's a ceremony. Oh, there yeah. are people everywhere. and. And Dawson said, hey, can we go right over there? Because Bo Jackson was over there. Oh, and one cool. of the guys on the golf team said, 
hey, Dawson, remember, we're just the golf team. Right. Like the, these are the cats that create the revenue for everybody else. Right. And, and so it, it's a big deal. And um, I would have liked to seen the NCAA get ahead of it and create more structure to it. But because they didn't, now those those uh, and men and women both have opportunities they didn't have before. I just don't want it to be short lived for them. For sure. If, if possible. Now, a company like us, how, now that's the athlete side, the mm-hmm. collegiate side. How could a maybe and I, the thing about NIL is tough because you either have these athletes that are kind of mm, lack of a better word like a no name uh, mm-hmm. minimal influence right that a brand like us could probably work with sure uh, but then you have these other athletes that are working with like Gucci and that they can spend millions of dollars on them and get their you know their influence like how could a small local mom and pop shop or just small business maybe maximize or utilize a NIL kind of uh, situation? Man, that, that's a great question, but it, it's, it's not, in my opinion, it's not just an NIL question. It also pertains to other marketing. Okay, so <clears throat> take your brand, yeah. right? And what are you? And then what segment does that feed into? So the analogy that we use sometimes is if you look at the Dallas Cowboys and you go to the star, you see Ford, you see Kroger, you see certain brands like that. Go to PGA Frisco and you see Rolex, BMW or Mercedes. All right? So it's a different market. Now, that's an issue with golf, though, because they're trying to get into other markets. They're trying to be – to spread out for and sure. to grow, right? So for you, it's a, it's an interesting challenge because you've got so much that you do, right? You've got casual wear. You've got other stuff that's a little more on the sporty side. Right. So you're – depending on what somebody wants, you're, you're a lifestyle brand. Right. So somebody can wear tumbleweed gear to a barbecue, yeah. the lake. You could put on a golf shirt and go to the club. Right. You, you've got so many different variations to your brand and to your lifestyle that it's a unique challenge for you. And part of it is now with technology, right? Podcasts. Oh, yeah. Video. All the stuff where you can get stuff out to the world. Someone who necessarily isn't a well-known name today might be a hugely well-known name next year. Right. So there's a gymnast out of LSU who's Mm -hmm. one of the biggest marketing. But a few years ago, nobody knew who she was. Right. Right. And so those opportunities are coming up and it's kind of finding a way to identify who's likely to become that personality and what part of your brand do you want them to be attached to? You you bring up who that, you know, that person, uh, the gymnast. I saw video footage of the uh, in Omaha, the mm-hmm. baseball, and just seeing all the young and old men just swoon, like just all <laughs> around her. It's amazing because of it's all through the NIL and and what social media has done with her influence. So, so football usually is the big thing that people look at first, and then right. basketball. But there's there's always that opportunity for somebody who is a magnetic personality, right? That is kind of off the beaten path, right? Right? Like there's a guy that does cornhole stuff. Right. And, and he's got a following. He's got a segment. And so how much of your brand do you want in that world? How much do you sure. want in the golf world? How much do you want in the tennis world? How much do you want in the um, outdoor concert music venue world? Right. And so for some brands, it's pretty easy because they just are what they are. Right. For if sure. you're Rolex, you're going most of the time you're going after the really high economic disposable income market. Yes. But folks like you, you've, you're so diverse and you've got so much going on that you've got lots of opportunities. Right. And, and other people do too for whatever their respective business is. So we had the opportunity. There was a D1 football player, great wide receiver from a, a Big 12 school that wasn't based in Texas. Now, this player had lived in the – well, it was from Texas area. If I said what city, it would give him away probably. And, uh, but the amount of money that they wanted to do it, we just couldn't afford. Right. And – hit this player's drafts, you know, was supposed to be a first round player. Their team was supposed to win the big 12. Right. And as you go through the season, the season didn't do quite as well. And then now that player's more going to be, you know, round two or round three player. Mm. So what I would have paid was not probably worth the value what I would have gotten and would have promoted our product to a different state. Right. Rather than actually Texans because none of the Texas schools follow that player. And so that was our only true experience that we've had with it on, you know, at a high profile player was it was very expensive. And like you said, the market marketability, 
I don't think it would have been on brand for who we were at that time. And I think that's key for you, right? So you're homegrown excellence, right? And you're growing. And it, it's hard to just try to, without anything further, just transplant into a new market. Yeah. And I don't know how effective that, that can be. I'm sort of a fan of going with known quantities or certainly trending the right way quantities, right? right? And you also have to be a good steward of your funds and and those sorts of things. Right. Uh, but I, I think one of the things that I love about Tumbleweed is the diversity of everything that you do, right? All your different products and offerings. And you're going to have opportunities that come up that you don't even know about. The ripple effect, because you do so much, next year you're going to have an opportunity to do an NIL deal with somebody that isn't even really on the radar screen right now, right? right? And so, but it needs to be cost effective for sure, for sure. Now, you brought some cool flattering things about Tumbleweed Textiles. One of my best memories about your family is we were at an event in Frisco selling some golf shirts, and your wife comes up and gives us a big hug. We're like, who is this lady? Because <laughs> Ren is very joyful and happy and outgoing, and uh, Jeb and I sometimes aren't at these events. And and at this time, we hadn't really broken that barrier, so we were still truly a local company. Right. And she bought all these golf shirts, all the ones that we had left. And it was one that we had gotten a cease and desist letter for. <laughs> and so we were getting rid of the rest that we could. Right. And I think we actually legally could have sold the, the design, but... Uh, that was the first time your family had purchased some of our shirts, mm. and it truly is one of the very, you're some of the first people to support us, and you had no clue who we were. Like, what got you and your family to love or like Tumbleweed Textiles, and what is it that, I guess, connected to y'all uh, about who we are? Well, first, it's a love. It's not a like. Um, your products, I think, are, are are even better than y'all understand that they are, right? So, first, it's... You're, you know, let's talk about um, what what did Nike used to say? We're not, we don't sell shoes, we sell a feeling, yes. right? Your your products give people a certain feeling and and bring a certain level of kind of. At that point, it was sort of homegrown excellence, right? The style. The, I'm a huge comfort guy, right? So the first time I put on a t-shirt, I was like, okay, finally, finally, yeah. this feels good, right? And it looks good. The golf stuff looked great. We've worn your stuff to tournaments across the country. Love this hat, the hat that I'm wearing. So Dawson played and, and qualified for the Western Amateur, right? And he right. was wearing one of these hats. And it. it was in a playoff, and it got on video and everything else. And people come over. Where did you get that? Where can we get one? You know those yeah. those kinds of things. Um, and and it fits who we are, right? It, it's your the style, the product, the feel, and and just the. The vibe that it puts off, I think, is – I think that's why you have such a strong customer following. Um, you know, some people just latch on to certain things. Whataburger, right? Um, Yeti. Like, there's just certain things that people have good feelings about. Right. And tumbleweed is one of those things where people – you just you just feel good. Heck yeah. Right? You just feel yeah. good when you're wearing this stuff. Why wouldn't you buy a bunch of it? No doubt. I right? love it. Yeah. Now, so w with that said, what are – you say lifestyle. Is there one or two of the lifestyle elements that we kind of promote that really resonates with you? I, I, so um, just the stuff that sort of comes off the top of the head, right? Um, for us, golf stuff, but also music, okay. barbecue. Um, it, it's funny. When, when, I, when I go to the store, I always grab like a hand of the stickers and I end up putting stickers on the wall or just – in, in funky places, right? Because they just look good and they feel good and they make yeah. you they make you happy, right? And you feel that way too when you wear the stuff. Yeah. Um, I I yes, you're a clothing brand, but I I actually view you more of a lifestyle brand. I love it, right? And the more music you do, the more barbecue stuff that you do, the more that you just get out there and you relate to people, yeah. right? I think that y'all help people feel good about themselves and enjoy life and take a break from some of the pressures and the stress of everyday life. As a branding guy, it makes me feel good. It, it should. That's good. It should. Now, music, what, going off the beaten path on this conversation, what's one, a couple of your favorite, all-time favorite musicians, bands? Oh, man. I, that's a trick question, right? Because okay. it, it, and I'm not, I, everybody yeah. says this, but I'm not just saying, it really depends on the day, right? So I was never really a country music guy until I went to college, and I realized that on Wednesday night there were 50-cent pitcher nights and you could go in and there'd be like 
eight guys and there'd be 50 women that all wanted to two-step. <laughs> right. And so I wasn't dumb, so I learned how to two-step. Um, so on a Friday night, it might be a red dirt band, right? Um, on a Saturday night, it might be kind of a more jazzy, funky type vibe. Yeah. It really, really depends on the day. But y'all have been doing some really cool stuff with with music and concerts and the barbecue and music together. And when you do that, it's as much the the vibe and the feel of what's going on as it is the actual music. Right. Right. And so uh, on a off weekend, which isn't very often, that type of event, that type of function is a really cool thing to go do and just kick back and relax and you know, let some stress roll off yeah. for a little bit. Like a good lawyer, you didn't give, you didn't play your card on that one. <laughs> That's good. Uh, now, uh, talking about, um, well, you didn't mention craft beer, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to force your hand on this one. I think there's this brewery down in the Austin area, right? That is, uh, I've heard pretty good things about. Yeah, so it's my favorite. So my nephew, Andy Martinick, is a world-class brewmaster. And I don't say that just because we're later. Like, he is a very talented guy. And he has a brewery called Tanglefoot. And when people try his beer, it... They just love it. And he's one of those guys, he's really... It's as much a science, but it's also an art, right? right? And so, for example, one time for Halloween, my sister, all of our families get together, and he rolls in with a pumpkin beer that he just made. There you go. And it was unbelievable, right? It was just unbelievable. So he's one of those guys. We got to um, get him up here in Frisco. We, we absolutely do. That is, that is one, that's one of my quests. Is, yeah. It's fantastic well, stuff. I, I would like to be a part of that, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So craft beer, barbecue, music. So, of course, you love our brand. Of course. But getting back on to golf, I first learned about you, and I didn't put the two together with Ren, this crazy lady that loved our <laughs> golf t-shirts. Right. Um, and then I was reading the Dallas Morning News, and I saw this guy that it basically said single-handedly, and I know that's probably maybe far-fetched, right. but it kind of alluded to that. This man from Frisco with two sons that play golf brought the PGA to Frisco. And then recently, I saw uh, D Magazine's CEO, saw the cover it. I, I didn't read it yet. I'm not going to lie, but right. I saw it uh, flowing through uh, social media. But it's it's obvious that you, the man, David Ovard, through coming to Frisco long, long ago with having no clue to having your kids go to the original Frisco High School, be golfers, and you being in the first, it sounds like, reputable law firm here, like big, big name law firm here in the city of Frisco, was able to do something that uh, very few people can do is leave a significant legacy, not just for golf, but all Frisco ISD, the economy. Mm-hmm. So what exactly did you do? How did you do it to bring the PGA to Frisco? Yeah, so that's a loaded question. So I, <laughs> I well, so back back to my dad. So my dad was a very well-known um, legal icon, if you will, mm-hmm. in North Texas, right? And so everybody knew who he was. He was on the Court of Appeals. He wrote these legal opinions, and he was very highly regarded, and he left a legacy, yeah. right? And it, I wanted to leave a legacy, and I didn't know what that would look like. And so I was with Strasburger and Price. There was a merger. Uh, that firm merged with Clark Hill, and we've been that firm for a while. But um, what happened was the kids were playing world-class golf, Right. And we had talked with the school district. And by the way, the school district has been amazing for us. Right. We're we're done with that path now. But I mean, a world class education, a private school education at a public school price. Right. Right. Unbelievable. Um, So and people knew that. Right. And there's a Frisco resident by the name of Greg Williams who grew up. We grew up across the street from each other. And he came to me and, and was talking about, hey, we don't have anything for the juniors or for seniors. And he'd been talking with some folks, some of the coaches with the ISD. And he had been working on that concept. Yeah. At that same time, Mark Harrison, um, the CEO of the Northern Texas PGA, was talking with the city about a junior golf park. And mm-hmm. they said, hey, you need to talk with David Ovard because he's been talking with us about something like that, too. And then Jordan Spees, coach, who coaches our boys, um, was – was he was at a golf club and he was looking at where he was going to grow into the future with his golf coaching and academy right. and, and all of that. So all of that led to the concept of – and this is how I tend to do things, you know this – is if we could do something to the highest level of excellence possible, what is that? 
then we'll deal with the realities right. and the costs and the real world stuff. Okay. But what right. is what what is this? If we could get whatever we wanted, what does that look like? And um, Cameron said, "You ought to talk to the PGA of America because they're they are the business of golf." Yeah. Right. And so we did. Now, for anybody who's ever tried to talk somebody into moving from West Palm Beach, right, to Texas, that can be a tough sell. West Palm's not an awful place to live. Yeah. Right. And so. That took a very long time. and But to your question, what did I do? I, I mean, to be, and, and I, I don't like talking about myself. I really don't. <laughs> so I'll put it briefly in that I, I put all the pieces together and negotiated uh, really up until sort of the 11th hour, um, the packages that would make every make it work for everybody. That's so you, you have the city of Frisco, you had the PGA of America, you had the Economic Development Corporation, you had the Community Development Corporation, you had the Frisco School District, right? Yeah. And all of those are sort of used to being the king of their own kingdom. Yeah. But everybody had to give up enough to make the rising tide float all boats. For sure. Right? Easy to say, really hard to do. And it took yeah. years and years and years and years yeah. to get that done. But you did it. We did it. We did it. What it feel like at the last tournament that they played their first uh, – a uh, tournament, it was about two, three weeks ago? Senior PGA Championship. How, what did that feel like standing there actually seeing it take place? It actually was emotional. Um, uh, we worked for years in secret, right, because yeah. you couldn't let it get out that this was happening. And so finally it became public. Finally it got announced. But for the for world-class players, famous players that have made history, Ryder Cup captains and everything else, to play that course, to have the live tournament happen – was one of the coolest things ever. Um, and it's not the end. So we've got the women's KPMG Women's Championship, PGA Championship coming in 2025. We have the Men's PGA Championship coming in 2027. We have tournaments in between there, um, including the Junior League Championships that are going to be on TV, um, sort of with an ESPN package yeah. like the Little League World Series, and then run that cadence again, yeah. right? And there's championships dispersed all the way you know, for 20 years. And then the the concept is, is that there's a Ryder Cup at the end of that, assuming that all goes well. Right. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We're super stoked. It's, uh, it's amazing that I read that Dallas Morning News article and then fast forward to months, maybe even a year or two later, got to actually sit down with you and get advice and, and tips for our business from mm -hmm. you, the man that brought the PGA of America to Frisco. That's incredible. Well, and, it, and it really left a mark the other day. I was working with uh, uh, one of the city organ uh, departments of what impact did uh, some of the tourism, uh, touristic events, I guess, right. uh, the last in the month of May, uh, how did it affect our business? And it was pretty cool. I think it was like 21, 26 percent our, our sales were up Fantastic. during those days of the PGA. Yeah. And I think it's because it just brought thousands of people in that might not live in the city. Mm hmm. And we are, of course, I believe, the go-to spot for the Frisco or Texas shirts. Agreed. And so, it, I mean, the impact that it brought is more than just golf, but it truly is the whole economy of the city of Frisco. So, it, kudos. It, well, thank you. It, it will it will float all boats around here in, to yeah. some degree. Um, so, to give you an idea of what's going to happen in 2027 for that week, right, if 250,000 people show mm -hmm. up, which is sort of the the estimate – there's about that many people in Frisco now for that week. Think about Frisco literally doubling in population. Yeah. Right? Wow. Like that's a lot of people. Super Bowl get 100,000 people, 110,000 people, 120,000 people. Yeah. But probably won't be out driving around. The, the... Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably not. But it's uh, the way that all this is working and we've got to give credit to the folks in the city that have worked on this and kept the model for a long time. Right? right? The leaders who have really stayed the path and have created those opportunities for all of us. Um, hopefully that happens more and more and more as people come in here for PJ Frisco, for the Star, for all the all the different venues in town, right? Mm. Hopefully that continues to happen. I, I think it will. The world's moving here, right? Oh, for sure. So we've got these big, huge companies. Some have their headquarters here, but most of them have realized they need to have a presence here in some way, shape, or form. It, 10, 15 years ago, we were viewed by the world as – Oh, they're cowboy hats and cowboy boots and, you know, that sort of thing. Now we are viewed as a sophisticated business and legal market. Yeah. And we are, right? And so the world now finally has caught up and they now realize it. And that's why everybody's coming here. 
All right. I love it. Helping yeah. us out. I'm Heck not going to yeah. lie. <laughs> uh, now, uh, as you know, I kind of share with you uh, who listens to this podcast. Right. It's a little bit of everybody from some of our amazing loyal customers, but also a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, designers, uh, creators that are trying to start their own business. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to uh, make sure that we ended on some good legal advice. Uh, maybe, you know, if you're, let's start with this. So I'll ask a series of questions, but okay. like if you're starting a business, uh, big or small, uh, what are some tips that you would give someone from the legal perspective? So first I would say you, you need to know what your business is or certainly what you would like to be when you're going to grow up, right? Right. So you want to know what your path is. And then you want to sit down with – you want to have a team of people, but you want to sit down with a good, reputable, qualified attorney mm -hmm. and have the conversation about, okay, here's where we are. Here's where we want to go. Can you help us get there? Right. Right. And somebody who knows what they're talking about will be able to lay out a plan for you and tell you what you need and just as importantly tell you what you don't need. Right. Yeah. So if your attorney tells you all these things that you need to do and all these things you need to spend money on, but doesn't tell you what you don't need to spend money on and what you don't need to do, you might want to reconsider talking with somebody else. Right? right. Because when people start a business, they tend to want to do all things right away. Yeah. Right. Let, let's forge the path. Let's. So where do you want to go? There's a path to get there. Yeah. Let's set out that path and let's stay on that path unless there's a good reason to deviate. And sure. usually what that means is that good reason would mean another revenue stream or revenue streams for you. Stay the path, build your business, protect it, build it in a way where it's protected, right? It doesn't do you any good to build a fantastic business and then have somebody take it from you, yeah. right? And if you, if you build your business in a quality way, many times you do become a target, yeah. right? But there's ways to set that up so that it does, it's protected, yeah. right? And so... What I, what I would do when someone comes to me and, and has that conversation, we sit down and we set out the path. Okay. Right. And then build a budget for that path and say, this is what you need. This is what you don't need. Don't let somebody sell you on this. Yeah. Now, with Tumbleweed Textiles, I'm not going to lie, I was our lawyer uh, <laughs> for many, many years. Right. Um, and it probably bit us in the butt. We've had some partnerships, uh, relationships. Uh, not to go too deep into it, because uh, I don't want to cause more legal issues by saying names or whatever. But the the say the basically we got ourselves in a situation where we um, partner with someone, uh, kind of in a license agreement, mm -hmm. and it just didn't work out in our favor. Sure. But the problem was is we didn't sign a contract. We didn't provide a contract from us to them that uh, protected us. Right. And so when we had to buy back a lot of product, we had to buy back thousands and thousands of dollars of product. And it was majority like 2X, 3X shirts, crop tops, things that we never would sell right. that they printed. And because their contract was written by them, it said we'd have to buy everything back if we ever right. uh, terminate our terms with them. So, you know, that was one of the first times I realized, okay, we really need a real lawyer, not me. And then later on, as we were uh, looking at expanding as our company, we had a, uh, a situation where I don't uh, uh, – the lawyer that we had at that time didn't really thoroughly read our document. And so then I went and negotiated with someone, and I, they kind of laughed at me because there was a part missed by the lawyer. So right. I was fighting a case that didn't need to be fought. Mm -hmm. um, all to the point, it, it was an aha moment that we needed a real lawyer. Um, kind of your perspective of let people know, like, because I'm also learning there's HR lawyers, there's this different types of lawyers um, and that specialize in certain things. And even if you get a really good lawyer, there's a power in the name because people might fear that law firm. Like, so... I, 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 this is kind of an open ended, but what's your thoughts about that? Well, so so you want to you want to work with somebody who knows what they're doing and has a reputation in that area and in your area, yeah. right? So if you're going to do a deal here in North Texas, right, work with a lawyer who's well known there. If you're going to be doing a deal in New York, mm -hmm. you probably want that lawyer to bring in somebody in New York who's known there, right? Mm -hmm. But the the reason that people often don't get a lawyer at the outset is, let's be honest, cost, expense. Lawyers yeah. aren't cheap. Good ones are not right. cheap, right? And so people say, I just can't afford it, so I'm going to 
I'm going to do this on my own. Yeah. You can do that for a period of time sometimes, but it, it often comes back to bite you or mm. it all, it, it, problems arise doing that way. So, yeah. you know, there are legal products out there where you can go and buy a box of legal documents or buy them online and do it yourself. And it, it invariably comes back where there are, people are coming in saying, I wish I would have talked with you sooner. And what would have cost $2,500 or $5,000 or $7,000 and now cost them 25 grand to fix it. Yeah. Now they're in a fight. Now they're in a dispute. The documents weren't done correctly. Oh, I didn't know this. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, of course you didn't know it because you're not a lawyer. And just because there's words on a piece of paper, you still have to have the institutional knowledge. You still have to have the relationships. You still have to be able to get people there from here. So what's one of the most important things in business? Law is no different. Experience. Yeah. Right? So it's easier to start a business and run a business when you've done it before. No doubt. Right? And so um, we, I try really hard to – let people know what the expectation is, what the likely cost is, and how do we get you there from here? Because if we do our jobs correctly, if I do my job correctly, you're going to have more money to grow and spend on your next contracts, right? right? Spend on your next negotiations and what have you. And so it is that it, – it's it's finding that sweet spot where people can afford the services at the outset to get them to success. For sure. Right. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge – for everybody out there that's listening to this podcast that has a young business, right, that's one of the challenges. It's not just that legal is part of it, but there are other things. It's the same way. Gosh, we'd really like to do this, but it's just cost prohibitive, yeah. right? At least build a relationship with a qualified lawyer, right, so that when you get to that point, you can very quickly bring them in and get to where you need to be. Yeah. But and, and And here's another thing, too. Good lawyers try to pay for themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can negotiate a better deal for you where, yes, I'm yes, I'm charging a, a, a fee for my service. But maybe I just got you a better deal that more than pays for my fee. Right. Right. And so if I and, and we do try to be relationship people, it's not just the legal documents. It's also, hey, let me introduce you to my other client over here. Let me introduce you to this person that I know where you might be able to grow your business faster or better or get a new type of product out there. Yeah. Right. So if I can help your business succeed, if I can help your business succeed faster, right, well, then I've paid for myself yeah. and I've just done you a great service. So try to uh, I try to do that. Really good attorneys try to do that as well, because it's yeah. good for everybody. One thing I've learned getting to sit down with you and talk is the power not only of of your name and all the things that you've already just mentioned, but it's also the creativity of a lawyer. It, and that's why the PJ is even here in Frisco is you are able to get very creative. And as you mentioned, get really, really high above the clouds, see the big bird's eye view of all the different options and all the different creative ways to make it work. Whereas most people only kind of focus in on one or two little things. Um, and for our company asking advice of like, how do we grow? It's been really incredible hearing some of the ideas that you have along the way, which hopefully one day people will find out because we're not there yet. Um, but th that's the one thing I never even thought of with the lawyers, the finding someone that really is creative and uh, just imaginative and a big vision person that can help guide a client somewhere, uh, maybe beyond where they could take themselves. Well, that that's really kind of you to say, but it's it's because – I have a passion for those things, yeah. right? And the people that are very good at creativity have a passion for it, right? Yeah. You and Jeb are experts at creating products, clothing, lifestyle that are very beneficial and helpful to people and make them feel good. There's a true talent to that. There's a true art to that that, that most people just don't have. I, I think – I like to think that my creativity, I put a lot of thought into it. And I like to think that I have a unique ability to help people get to where they want to go mm -hmm. when other people can't get them there. No doubt. Right. And I, I was raised where – and I, I really – right or wrong, I really have always believed this, that there is a – if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. There's a way to get there. There's a way to get there. There's a way to get there. How do we do it? Now, yeah. then the question is, okay, we've identified the way. <laughs> is that – is for a business, is it economically yeah. worth it to do that? Right. Is this beneficial to them? If it is, let's do it. If it's not, let's find a different way. For sure. Right. But I think it takes – everybody has a, a skill set, and I, I hope that that's one of mine. Love it. Well, 
not to bring uh, back attention, Nestle, back to your son, but he is a pro golfer now. I mean, yep. what, what what names should they be looking for uh, <laughs> with the Baylor Bears and on the uh, hopeful uh, pro tour? So so we'll go with Dawson first. He's playing uh, on the APT. He's playing a second APT event this week, and I so my well, I'm going to combine them. So Davis is playing in a uh, AJGA event, all, uh, American Junior Golf Association uh, event. And as I was driving over here from that, Wren called and said that Dawson had a double eagle today, wow. which is making a two on a par five. Wow. So apparently he hold a shot from 260 yards at a big event outside of Chicago today. That's not too bad. So they're waiting to see how that pans out. So he's, he's cutting his teeth on, on that pro tour, and then he'll do qualifying school in the fall. Yeah. So qualifying school gets you into uh, PGA Tour Canada, PGA Latin America, or Corn Ferry, and then those things – feet up to the PGA Tour. And then Davis is um, very excited to head out to Baylor, Coach McGraw, who is a legend in college coaching. Uh, so the two guys that are coming down the stretch, you know, like in the U.S. Open, he, the guys coached basically uh, the vast majority of American players at, at the top. He's he's yeah. touched them in some way, shape, or form. And he's a fantastic human being. And um, Davis and Coach McGraw hit it off. So Davis is ready to go. Uh, play for him and see how that pans out. And that kid's got a ton of talent as well. So really fun, exciting stuff. And that's why I'm stinky and sweaty yeah, at the moment. Good. But I am wearing my hat. I love it. I'm wearing my hat. Well, uh, I want to make sure you put that plug in so people can look out for them. Because I know there's probably nothing more valuable to you than people uh, to support them and see their success as they definitely will see as they move forward with the golf. Well, so. I, I appreciate that. That actually was my my fuel to do the PJ Frisco project with yeah. Davis and Dawson. And um, we told them they it started when they were really, really young, and we said, you cannot tell anybody. So in the Dallas Morning News article, the the reporter said, what are you what, what are you most proud of out of all yeah. this? And I said that my kids never told anybody. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're very proud of them, and whatever they choose to do is great. But um, – they're more importantly than that. They're really quality people and right. wonderful human beings. But we'll we'll see how it plays out. I love it. Yeah. Well, David, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Any final it. final comments or thoughts that you want you don't want to uh, that you want to throw on the table before you head out? I, I'm so when I say thank you for having me, I really mean it. I yeah. I think what you and Jeb have done and are doing is really fantastic. And I and I don't say that it's not in jest, right? I yeah. think that you help people lead better lives because you help them feel better about what's going on. And that should not be underestimated in this day and age. People have a lot of stress, yeah. right? The nine to five, taking care of family, taking care of kids, having a job, building a business, all the stuff, right? If you're yeah. working hard, that's that's a lot. And, and people yeah. that are successful at it have a lot going on. And I think that y'all help them feel good. And I think that y'all help them um, be able to either take a break along the way or just feel better along that path. Love it. Right. Thank you so much. And so I'm I'm very uh, I'm I'm appreciative that you um, had me today. Well, it's, it's mutual feelings for us towards y'all as well. I mean, Ren has helped us tremendously, uh, definitely in the city of Frisco, and you uh, uh, just have been a good friend as well. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Um, but y'all, thank y'all for uh, joining us today. A little business law talk, as well as to me one of the most uh, cool stories of how. Some random man in Frisco, Texas brought the PGA of North America to Frisco. So that's incredible. Um, if you can, check out his boys uh, as they hit the golf tours. Um, please follow us at Tumbleweed Textiles. Uh, follow our social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And please uh, give us a listen and share with your friends because we believe there's some valuable information on these podcasts. And so the only way people find out is through you. So thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful day.